At last, we are ready to start a Nessus vulnerability scan. This is the main page of the Nessus web interface. We are in My Scan section of Scans tab. At the upper left corner, click New Scan. First, Nessus asks for the scanner. We have seen them before, so here we can choose the most suitable one for our scan. But in the home version of Nessus, unfortunately, some scans are disabled. If you click Internal PCI Network Scan, for example, the application redirects you to the Nessus website to buy Nessus Professional. There are also available scanners like Basic Network Scan, or alternatively, go to User Defined tab and select your own policy. This is the policy we defined in the previous lecture, so I chose this. Now, give a name to your scan. As you can see in the right side of the name field, the required fields are identified by Nessus. So write a description if you want. Select the folder for the outputs and define the targets. You can list the hosts in targets field one by one. I want to scan my two systems now. 99.139 is OWASP BWA and 99.206 is my Metasploitable system. So if you want a multiple IP addresses, just put a comma in between them. Uh, you can also define an IP block or a range, just as you remember in the Nmap lectures. Or alternatively, if you have a file that contains a list of the hosts that we also covered earlier, you can add that file using the Add File link in the Upload Targets field. So now we're ready to launch the scan. At the bottom of the page, select Save, or click the down arrow button and select Launch to start the scan immediately. I choose Launch. It first saved the scan and then launched immediately. So while it's scanning, let's see some of the parts of Nessus interface. At the left, you see the folders. Next to my scans folder, it says that I have one active scan. And in my scans page, you see the scan that we just started. If you click on it, you see the scan details. There are three tabs here, hosts, vulnerabilities, and history. When you click on the vulnerabilities tab, you see the vulnerabilities found during the scan. Here, we already have some results. Now click the Hosts tab to turn back. These are the systems that we defined as targets, OWASP BWA and Metasploitable. At the right, you see the severity levels of the vulnerabilities. Nessus classifies vulnerabilities into five levels. Informational level quickly identifies non-vulnerability information, which is, well, nice to know and separates them from the vulnerability detail, which is need to know, right? Low level identifies the flaws that might help an attacker to better refine his attack, but by itself, that flaw won't be sufficient for a compromise. Medium level identifies that some information is leaking from the remote host. An attacker might be able to read a file he should not have access to. High level identifies that the attacker can read arbitrary files on the remote host and or can execute commands on it. And critical level vulnerabilities are the most important vulnerabilities for us. These vulnerabilities can be exploited by a tool and in most cases, the attacker does not need to make an extra effort to exploit them. So let's fast forward the scan. Now on the right side of each host row, you can see the status of the scan of that host. 100% means the scan of that host is complete. Did you know you can ping the hosts sometimes to understand that they're still alive? And finally, our scan is completed in four minutes, which is a very fast scan for a vulnerability scan. Now let's click the Metasploitable to go to the vulnerabilities of that host. Here are the vulnerabilities of the Metasploitable machine found by this scan. Please note that there might be other vulnerabilities that cannot be found by Nessus with the policy that we used. The vulnerabilities are ordered by severity levels by default, and I think that's a good idea. The vulnerabilities in the critical severity level are the most important ones for us again. So click on a vulnerability to see the details of it. So here we have the name of the vulnerability, 
a brief description, a solution method, and the links to learn more about it, and last, the host and the port where the vulnerability lives. At the right side of the screen, uh, you see some additional and important information about the vulnerability. So for this particular vulnerability, Nessus says that we can exploit it using Core Impact, which is a commercial and very powerful exploitation tool. And here are the scores of this vulnerability. 10.0 is perfect for us. So click Back to Vulnerabilities to go back to the list of the vulnerabilities. Here there is another vulnerability which says the VNC server is running on the host and its password is password. If that's true and if there's no additional measure to protect the host, we can access that host very easily. I'll show you. Let's test it. Go to the terminal screen and run the VNC viewer by typing XVNC viewer and hit enter. If you don't have VNC viewer installed on your Kali, type apt dash get install XVNC viewer and hit enter. Type the IP address of Metasploitable as the VNC server and hit enter. And now type password as the password and hit enter again. And voila, we are in the system. I use the WOMI Linux command to learn the user that I've caught and uname a to learn the operating system and the kernel details. If config to see the information about the network interfaces, etc. Now type rm rf slash. No, 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 no. Just kidding. Don't. Don't do that. Don't. 